Hi. Today I'd like to talk about the progression of silver from the 1860s until the period we're at right now, uh, which is modernism or mid-century modernism. The first examples I'm going to give you are all Gorham. Okay, so starting with some exciting things that we have, here is this ladle from the 1860s. It is a small punch ladle. It has cherries on this branch here, and then the bowl has strawberries and raspberries. Very well done, all hand done. It's, it's an exceptional piece of silver. From the same period, we have this mug, and um, it is mixed metal, but, but this little tiny berry here is called a fame, I'm afraid. But it's, it has a branch for a handle, it has a, a copper berry, uh, again, 1860s Gorham. Okay, as far as other things, I thought this bowl that we bought in Florida is very interesting. It's Gorham again. It has a glass inside and then a silver overlay with it that's beautifully detailed. They didn't just put this glass piece in there. It was made to fit exactly. So the ruby glass um, actually extends into the silver area. If this ever breaks, there's no fixing, I'm afraid. Okay, other interesting things. 1860s, you know, very interesting pattern, hound. Um, how they decided to put this whippet dog on these serving pieces. Somebody had some real ideas. Another pattern that I think is really interesting is this Nuremberg by Gorham. This is a salad set with a, um, you know, a German man and woman. The interesting thing about the pattern is that each piece is different. So if you have teaspoons, you'll have 12 teaspoons, each will be a different German worker. This is one of Anton Heller's patterns. It was not a commercial success, but it's a very unusual, neat pattern. Another one that Anton Heller did that was not a commercial success was the pattern Old Masters. And it's all different artists. I think it's a great looking pattern. Uh, for one reason or another, it has never been popular either e e when it was made or in today's climate. Okay, so, so that is what Gorham started with. But then modernism started. And when did modernism start? You know, there's examples from the 1860s, things that look sort of modern. But for the 20th century, Eric Magnuson at Gorham's time from 1925 to 1929. That was one of the best creators of modernism in America. Unfortunately, the year was 1929, the end of his stay with Gorham. And it's obvious why that happened. The depression came and people were not buying high-end things. One of the saddest things in the Gorham book said that much of Eric Magnuson's silver was melted in the 1930s because it wasn't selling and now we really appreciate those things. Okay, then one of my finds in recent weeks was this really cool uh, Gorham bowl. It's date stamped with an elephant and that's the year 1930, so just after Eric Magnuson left. But it's all hand hammered. It was given in the year 1939, so maybe it languished at Gorham for a while, but it shouldn't have. It should have been, you know, at some exhibition centerpiece or something like that. It's very well done, very modern looking, very 1930-ish and the weight is unbelievable. It's 55 ounces on this little bowl. It's one of my favorite things that I've found so far this year. So everything I've told you about so far has been Gorham, but mid-century modernism would not be complete without La Paglia. And I love this pair of two-branch candelabras by him. 
Again, it was a very short reign. George Jensen was closed down in Europe because of the war. Uh, La Paglia was sent by the George Jensen Company to head up the George Jensen Company in America. Uh, he went to work for International Silver. He had his own uh, workshop on the grounds. He created wonderful Danish style silver there. Um, unfortunately, he was killed in a car crash in 1947. So Magnuson's efforts were curtailed by the Depression and La Paglia by his untimely death. Thank you.